In this video, I'm taking you inside my Bangkok apartment. I'm giving you a full tour and giving you all the info if you're looking for an apartment in this city. Let's go. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric. I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, but four years ago, I got a one-way flight over here to Thailand. If you are traveling to Thailand soon, if you're thinking about moving out here to Bangkok, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to show you everything I love about this city. This is actually my third apartment in this building. This building is called Rhythm Ekamai, and although I liked it before, I wanted to try a new neighborhood, I wanted to try a new building. However, the combination of location, price, quality, and value, it just made it really hard to turn down. So here I am again, getting my third apartment in this building. I'm going to talk about price in detail later in this video, but just know that this neighborhood is one of the most expensive areas to live in Bangkok. It's only 300 meters from the Ekamai BTS station, and that makes it super easy to hop on and off the train and get in and out of the downtown area, even during rush hour. And that is a very, very important factor if you're choosing a place in Bangkok. Rush hour is serious business, and it can hugely affect your quality of life, so you should really take public transportation into consideration before you pick a place. It's also close to a lot of restaurants, cafes, bars, and nightlife in the Tangla and Ekamai neighborhoods, so it's really a great place for expats and young people to live. I love this neighborhood. I would say it's definitely not too touristy. There are some expats that live here, especially Japanese people, but at the same time, it does have a neighborhood community feel to it, and there are a good amount of local Thai people that live in this area. Starting up here on the roof, besides the beautiful infinity pool, there's a lot of areas to hang out up here. There's some green space to exercise. There's some tables to hang out and chill. And upstairs on the upper level, there's a work area. So if you're working from home and want a view, that's a great place to hang out. And if you're a movie person, there's a room with a big screen projection set up. So it's a perfect place to have movie night. Now coming into the gym up here on the roof, it's definitely something that's nice to have, but to be honest, it's not really enough in here if you are a serious gym goer. They've got some dumbbells and cardio equipment, but for me, I prefer a full size gym. And luckily, right next door is an amazing new gym that's got everything you could ever ask for. Now we are coming into the room. It is on the 11th floor. It's 35 square meters. It is quite small, to be honest with you, for a one bedroom, but most one bedrooms in Bangkok are about this size. If you want a larger room, you're either gonna have to pay a premium or you're gonna have to settle for an older building because most of the modern, newer constructions are all about 35 square meters for a one bedroom. The first thing you'll probably notice in the room is this big glass wall. I guess this is what technically makes it a one bedroom, but really it's more of just a large studio with this glass partition. It's nice though, because you can close this and there's also a curtain so you can subdivide the room into a living area and a sleeping area. And it's also nice because it lets a lot of light all the way into the other side of the room, but it's not really a true one bedroom in my opinion. So if you really wanted like a secluded bedroom area, you're better off getting like a more traditional floor plan. I like this floor plan though, because it really maximizes the amount of space you have in the room. And as you can see, I've got this video equipment here because I'm working on a special project. And when I was looking for an apartment, that was a really hard thing to find was a room, a one bedroom that had enough space for stuff like this. Real quick, the kitchen is right here. And although it's not the biggest kitchen in the world compared to a lot of the newer buildings in Bangkok, this one actually has a pretty decent sized kitchen. It's got a two burner stove. It's got a microwave down there. The room did not come with this toaster oven. I got this toaster oven last year and it has come in clutch for cooking and reheating pizza and all kinds of things. So definitely recommend something like this if you're gonna be in Bangkok for a while because most of the rooms do not come with ovens. Almost everything you see in this room came with the room. With the exception of the girl, she comes separately. The landlord did a really good job furnishing and styling the place. And I would say this is beyond what you would normally expect from a furnished apartment. With the exception of a few specific things, which I'll point out, everything you see here was included. One of my favorite parts about this room is actually the bed. So it's a custom built bed that opens up like this. So you have a ton of storage underneath, which is crucial for a small room like this. And if you're going to live your HiSo Thai life, you're going to need your Marshall Bluetooth speaker. This one I actually brought from the US. I got it there because here, these things are so expensive. They're like 600, 800 US dollars here. I don't know why, I guess it's the import stuff, but these speakers are great. So I actually stuck this in a suitcase and took it from the US. Right through here is the closet. I like that it's got its own little room that you can walk into. You've got a wardrobe built in and then access to the balcony right here. 
It is definitely not big, but it is good for drying clothes, which is really important here because apartments here don't have dryers. It does have a great view of the BTS station. That's BTS Ekamai. When I first checked this place out, there was actually a different couch here and it was absolutely hideous. It was like purple. I had the landlord take it out and I went and I got my own couch because if you spend a lot of time working or chilling at home, then you know that a couch is important. So I just went out and got my own couch. Checking out the bathroom really quick. It's nothing special. You've got the stand-up shower with the rainfall water head and the handheld one. The one thing that I don't like about this bathroom or a lot of bathrooms I've seen in Bangkok apartments is that the lighting is usually really, really bad. For some reason, there's really poor lighting around the mirror so you can barely even see yourself. The last few apartments I had, I actually went out and got like a separate light to put on the mirror just so I could see myself while I'm getting ready. So that is it for the room tour. Now I'm gonna take you outside and give you all of the details on price and give you some tips if you wanna find your own apartment in Bangkok. Uh, wait. <laughs> We just came out to this roof garden and before I jump into all the info about the price, I want you to think about what you would pay for a room in a building like this. Now I should add that this building does have a premium price and that is mostly due to the fact that it has a great location. It's so close to the BTS and also close to all the bars and the restaurants and the nightlife and the Tongla and Ekamai areas and it's just a few stops into the center of Bangkok towards Asok and Siam so it's really easy to get around if you live in this area. I am currently paying 25,000 baht for my room and in addition to that I'm also paying for the water, the electricity and the internet service. Now actually it's not that much additional, water is only like 50 or 70 baht per month, electricity is about 900 to 1200 baht a month depending on how much I use it and internet is about 400 baht per month. The utility cost really isn't that big of a factor unless you're running multiple air conditioning units all day and all night. If you are at least a little careful about how much you're using the air conditioning then I don't think it's going to be a problem. Do I think that I got a good price on this unit? I would say I got a pretty decent price. After COVID, a lot of the landlords started jacking up the rents a lot. And fortunately, it was pretty hard to find decently priced places uh, when I came back to Thailand a few months ago. Now that COVID is over, it just seems like everyone wants to claw back the money they lost over the last few years. So it's making renting a little bit harder. Let me give you some quick tips if you're looking to rent your own apartment in this city. So number one is I would explore the city and figure out what neighborhood do you like. Once you narrow it down to one or a few neighborhoods, you can walk around and see what buildings are in the area that you might want to check out. At that point, you can either contact an agent to help out with your search, or you can do what I did and just walk into these buildings, go to their administration office and ask if they have any available units. In some cases, they will connect you with the owners directly. And let me tell you, that will definitely help you out when it comes to negotiating. In my case, the rent was 35,000 baht initially, and I got it down to 25,000 baht. If I had gone through an agent, it would be a lot harder to get the price down that low, only because the owner has to pay the agent fee and there's just not enough money left on the table at that point. Another question that comes up is, do you need to have a one-year contract or can you just do a short-term three-month or six-month stay? And the short answer to that is it's possible to get shorter than one year, but it severely limits your options. Most owners just want to do a one-year contract. It's possible to get six months, but less than six months is very, very difficult unless they're desperate to rent the unit. And I think now that COVID is ended, that's going to be nearly impossible. In my case, the owner wanted to do a one-year contract, but I negotiated it down to six months. I knew that she had this unit for a while and had been sitting empty, so I made the offer for six months and she took it. Now, I might stay longer than that, but at least now I have the flexibility if I want to move in six months. And my last tip about your own apartment search is about the security deposit. Most landlords require a two month security deposit, which I thought was a little odd when I first came here, but I found out it was kind of the norm. There was recently a new law passed that limits landlords to only collect one month maximum security deposit if they own five or more units. Now, how will you know if your landlord owns five or more units? Well, you may or you may not. When it comes down to it, regardless of what the law says, if they don't wanna rent you the unit, they're not gonna rent it to you. So if I were you, I would just be prepared to pay that two month security deposit. I've read online, a lot of people worried about getting scammed out of their security deposit. Personally, it's never happened to me or anyone I know, but I'm sure it does happen out there, especially when you're talking about landlords that can be Thai or foreigners themselves. 
and then their tenants being foreigners from all over the world. It's just a lot harder to get that money back when you're in a foreign country. But I've never personally seen a problem and I think as long as you take care of the place, there's a reasonably good chance you're gonna get all or most of your money back. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna enjoy this sunset right now. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos out here in Bangkok, hit the subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.